I'm back to AUE Street, the land of hills, open skies, and trivial trees, where behind every hills are more, well, trivial trees, open skies, and more hills. Me and Mo came here to hunt some ptarmigan. On my previous winter trip, I had brutal minus 40 temperatures, so we came prepared. But we got lucky this time. It was very enjoyable, around minus 5, minus 10 degrees Celsius. We could spend entire days outside, not feeling the bite of the cold. This is my second ptarmigan hunt. I knew what to look for, bushy wheeled areas, that's where they usually hang out. And it didn't take long to find them. Here are a dozen, about 67 yards ahead. That shot should have been a miss, hitting that spruce on the way, but it did hit the bird. Second shot though should have been a hit, but a complete miss. Third shot is a kill shot, a lucky one though, just as they started to fly away. Good boy, yes! Yes, come! Come! One thing about Mo, he is hearing impaired. I mostly communicate with him through sign language Good boy. and electrostatic color. Good boy. I use the voice just as a sport. I know he can hear me, but only when I'm close and loud enough. Fetch. I'm no dog trainer, but we do have a great relation. He understands what I ask and is a real fast learner. Come on, good boy. Yes. Good boy. Come. Good job. Yeah, good boy. Good boy. I spent good money on what was supposed to be a great in-scope camera, but despite being an overcast day with snow, it was too challenging for it. I was very, very disappointed in seeing the footage. You can make up some of the details, but I really wanted to bring back what shooting through that scope felt like. It's such a joy to be out like that collaborating with the dog. And oh, don't worry, he has his more than fair share of birds.
During the hike, I even found a ptarmigan sleeping area. They ball up in the snow. They couldn't be far. They left no less than a few minutes ago. The snow didn't have the time to cover the poop they left behind. I followed the tracks and 200 yards away I found them. All the game I harvest, I will always investigate their eating habits. This usually tells us where to find them. My snowshoes aren't just transport device, they are also a cooking contraption. I like to use steel wire when cooking, it's pliable and foldable. You can easily turn your meat around the fire by bending them. Useful when one side is burning while the other side is freezing. I do believe medium rare is how it should be cooked. You get the best flavor and texture. This is the closest thing to deer tenderloin I know of. People often ask how to cover the gamey taste. And they usually don't like my answer, but I stand by it. If you don't like game meat, leave the animals alone. Like this tastes just like this here tastes just like tenderloin. 